Hello and welcome to this online video lecture about electronegativity and bonding type. By the end of this lecture, you should understand the three main types of chemical bonding discussed in this video. You should also be able to use electronegativities to predict which of the three types of bonding will form between two atoms. So let's get to it. The main types of bonding that we're going to be talking about in this, in this lecture are ionic, polar covalent, and nonpolar covalent. So what we have here is at the top with ionic you actually have two atoms that are transferring electrons. So one atom, say atom A, is giving its electron to atom B. This turns the atoms into ions, one positive ion and one negative ion. And then the difference in charge of the two ions causes them to stick together. So ionic bonding is best remembered as a transfer of electrons. Now, polar covalent molecules are something different. We have two or more atoms that are sharing electrons, and they make a small particle called a molecule when they stick together. However, with polar covalent molecules, the two atoms don't share the electrons evenly. One atom has the electron more often zipping around its nucleus than the other atom does. And so what this does is it creates ends to the molecule that are kind of positive and kind of negative because the end that has the electron spending more time there ends up a little bit negative. So those ends are called dipoles and compounds like that are called polar covalent because the molecules carry these charges with them. Uh, an easy way to remember it, a concise way to remember it, is unequal sharing of electrons. And then you might be able to guess what nonpolar covalent is. That's when you have two atoms that are sharing electrons and they're sharing them equally. Because they're sharing them equally, the two ends are the same and neither one has a relative charge. So we have ionic substances, which consist of many, many, many atoms changing into ions as they transfer electrons, and then the ions of opposite charge all sticking together. And then you have the covalent compounds, both made of little tiny particles called molecules, which are at two or more atoms stuck together. The polar covalent substances, they don't share their electrons equally, so the molecules have positive and negative ends, whereas the Nonpolar molecules share them equally and there are no positive or negative ends. So what this lecture is really kind of getting down into is how you can use electronegativity to tell which of the three types of bonding a compound is going to have. Basically there's a set of rules that kind of use a scale and the scale is of the difference of electronegativity between the two atoms involved. So basically you take the atom that has the highest electronegativity and then you subtract the electronegativity from of the other atom from that and then that will give you the difference. So you want the difference the difference in electronegativity. And you should know by now that difference means to subtract. Now, we're going to use a symbol in this lecture from now on for difference in electronegativity. And that is going to be the symbol delta, which is basically just a triangle, En. So the difference in electronegativity I'm going to represent by delta En. All right, so when we have all, po all sorts of possibilities here for electronegativity differences. Um, we're going to start basically at what is often considered the bottom of the scale. Let's say we have two atoms that are exactly the same that are bonded together, like two fluorine atoms. Well, if you have two fluorine atoms bonded together, you don't even really have to look up that fluorine's electronegativity is four. It doesn't really matter because the atom is the same, which means the electronegativity is going to be the same. So anytime you have the same atom bonded to itself, its difference in electronegativity is going to be zero. And the zero end of the scale is as nonpolar as it gets. 
So we have this one end of the scale where it's the difference of electronegativity is zero. Actually, here, let's do this like this. So we've got a, a scale, right? Oop. And down here, we're going to say what the electronegativity difference is. And at one end, it's zero. And that's the nonpolar end. So anytime you have an electronegativity difference of zero, then those molecules are nonpolar. But then what you have is you have a spectrum because different elements have different electronegativities. You have all sorts of values that can fall along this line. So as we start to increase the electronegativity difference, um, you tend to go up to about 0.5. And then once you start to hit an electronegativity difference of 0.5, we don't consider those molecules to be nonpolar anymore. That's where the polar molecules begin. So um, 0.5 would be like if you had um, carbon bonded to nitrogen, because carbon's electronegativity is 2.5, and nitrogen's electronegativity is 3. So 3 minus 2.5 is 0.5. So that would be an example of a molecule that you'd find right here on this scale where the polar molecules just start. Now, just a, a word of caution here. These are not hard and fast numbers. And sometimes in different references, you'll see them that they're slightly different where the cutoffs are because this is just a scale. And humans have arbitrarily said, OK, this is where nonpolar molecules stop and polar ones start. But for the purposes of this lecture in this class, we're going to use 0.5 as the cutoff between nonpolar and polar molecules. So then the, the scale will continue up until about oh, 1.6. And all of the molecules that fall within the range of po the, the range of electronegativity difference of 0.5 to 1.6, we consider those to be polar covalent molecules. And then the final type of bonding, ionic, well, you can you can say with confidence that if the two atoms have an electronegative difference, electronegativity difference of 2.0 or greater, then you can say with confidence that that's an ionic bond. So what do we have here? So we've got 0 to 0.5 is nonpolar, right? And then if it's greater than 0.5 to 1.6, then that's going to be polar covalent. And then if it's 2.0 or greater, then it's going to be ionic, this whole end of the scale. So those are the three types of bonding. And that's how you can use electronegativity to figure out which type of bonding you have with two atoms that are given to you. But you might have noticed something. And that is that there is a little gap right here. What about this little gap right here? Well, things get a little muddy in that little gap. So basically, the rule for 1.6 to 2.0 is this. If one of the two atoms is a metal, then it's ionic. And if neither of the two atoms that are bonded together is a metal, if they're both nonmetals, then it's polar covalent. So an example of each one of these, if you have, say, hydrogen bonded to fluorine, then you look up their electronegativities. You find that fluorine is 4 and that hydrogen is 2.1. So you have 4 m minus 2.1, and you get 1.9. And 1.9 falls within this range. It's not 2.0 yet. So then you have to ask yourself, well, what do I have here? I have two nonmetals. 
So because these are two nonmetals and the electronegativity difference falls between 1.6 and 2.0, you would consider that to be a polar covalent molecule. As a matter of fact, that is probably one of the most polar covalent molecules that you're going to find. On the other hand, if you have a bond between sodium and bromine, if you look that up, you can see that sodium's electronegativity is 0.9 and bromine's electronegativity is 2.8. And so if you subtract 0.9 from 2.8, oops, 0.9 from 2.8, guess what you get? You get 1.9, which is the same that we got in the hydrogen fluorine bond. But when we look at what we have here, sodium is a metal, bromine is not a metal. So we're again within the range of 1.6 to 2.0. One of them's a metal. So then we're going to use this rule right here. Since we're in this range and one of them's a metal, this is considered an ionic bond. So this is an example of how you can use this rule right here in this little, little bit of wiggle room to decide if you have a very polar covalent bond or you have an ionic bond. So that's it. That's how you can decide if uh, the bonding between two elements is going to be ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent and we kind of went over what each one of those bond types means. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions as always feel free to ask in class.